hey what's up guys welcome back to the channel this is Austin back again with another simple video on web development as i promised you i'm going to be showing you how we can implement our toasts on real working projects so this is what i showed you in the previous tutorial on how to create these toasts you're seeing posted successfully deleted successfully passwords match they don't match validating any kind of feedback that you want to give to the user when they take action on your website so this is already a working project so when the user tries to click this button without feeling anything check on the right hand side they're going to tell the user please fill in all the fields so that's some working validation on the form then if they are to enter things that do not match so passwords that do not match and they click check you see passwords do not match and if they are to put in passwords that match they will get password matched please wait and i put in some set timeout function that is going to be redirecting users to the page i want so stick around if you like this tutorial and you're ready to learn what we are, how we are going to implement those different toasts on different validation phases so that's what i'm going to be showing you in this simple tutorial on this already designed form i'm just going to pass you through the markup on how i created this then we go into our validation because that's what has brought us here non-designing the old form but in case you want to know how we design such forms i already have tutorials about this same framework materialize you'll be able to see how we create different forms and what you need to be having you need to be having the materialize css file and the materialize js file so right now my project is inside a folder called json and i called it validate so it is it is in the same directory with these two folders so css and js so that's what you're seeing here we first specify the folder name which is js then inside we get the file called materialize.mini.js the same applies to the css file we go inside a folder called css then the file is called materialize.mini.css in case you're new to the channel and this is the first video that you have watched with me creating then i'm going to leave the links on how you can get these files and learning more about those toasts even forms how to create different forms so let me pass through the markup the way the reason why you're seeing this form centered i put it inside a grid system and we create a grid system using this row row class we close it down here as you can see end of row then inside the row that's where we shall be putting columns so the first column as you can see on large screens it takes up three columns on medium screens three columns on small screens then it takes up 12 columns so the maximum is 12 that's the complete grid system and these are the three columns you're seeing here then for the form i created also another column and i said on large screen it's going to be taking up six columns on medium screen six and on small screens 12 so right now what you're seeing here is six so what you're seeing here there is three plus six then nine and we created our form inside there and we put the rest of the column on this side so it's balanced three plus three that is six plus this six twelve then for the fields they are very very simple to create just write this and write that the major parts that we want on this form we gave this first input field of the first password an id of pass one then the second field of confirm we gave it an id of pass two so these these are the important parts that you have to put on these forms when you're creating them the id on both fields then on the submit button the one you're seeing here check 
I also gave it an ID of validate. So these IDs are the most important elements or attributes that we need right now from this form. Then with all that said, let's now start on our simple JavaScript. I'm going to create some simple custom script tags. Then what you need to do is to link an event to this button. So we want to link an event on this button and it's going to be the click function or event. So on click, sorry, it's an event on clicks. So we want the user when clicks this button to take some action. So what you're going to do is create say document dot get element by ID. So you have to write it the way you're seeing it there. And what you need to get is this input in this submit button that has the ID of validate. So I'm going to write here, validate. Then I want to add an event listener on it. So I'll say add event listener. And the event I want to add on it is the click event. And this is the function I want to run when the user clicks it. So validate password. So that's the name of the function that I want to run when the user clicks that. We have not yet created that function. So we are going to go below here and recreate that function called validate password. There is some parameter that we are going to pass in inside here. It's called the E. So right now, let me show you before I pass in that. Right now, if you are to click this form, you see it loads. If you can see it loads. So we want to prevent that default behavior of the form reloading because we may not be able to see our toasts or alerts when the page refreshes. So we are going to pass in E as a perimeter. You can pass in a full word event. So I shall say E dot prevent, <coughs> excuse me, prevent default. So we are preventing the default behavior. Refresh. As you can see, we are clicking it. Now it's not refreshing. So we have prevented the default behavior of this form. I'm clicking on this button, but there is nothing happening. So we are preventing the default behavior or we prevented the default behavior. The next step, what we need to do is to get the values that the user has entered in these input fields. What we are going to do, we are going to create our simple variables here. And I'm going to call this one, I'm going to say va first pwd apologize somebody that called me outside here so i'm back then we want to get the values that the user has entered in these two input fields so what you're going to do is first create a variable here i'm going to call it first pwd so first password i assign it to document document dot get element by id remember we gave them ids of pass one so we want to get that id and then we say dot value for us to get the value that the user has entered in so the same applies to the second field i'm going to say second p sorry pwd we assign it to document dot get element by id and it has an id of pass two and also we want to get its value so basically right now we have access to what the user is going to be putting in these two input fields and these are the two lines that do that then the next step since now we have access to those values we need to check if the user has really entered these values in those input fields you're going to put an if statement or condition and want what we want to check to check for sorry we say first if first pwd is equal to null or 
this first pwd is equal to nothing then comma we also check for the second pwd if it is equal to null or it is empty so right now we are checking if the user has not entered anything in these fields so we shall say we shall initialize it with the materialize syntax to say materialize om dot toast which is a function and this function takes in an object so we open curry brackets there and we write the key name which is html and what we want to display to the user we are going to say please fill in all the fields and we don't want the user to continue we shall return false so let us refresh this page when the user clicks this oh why is it refreshing it will prevent the default behavior Whoa. If first PWD is equal to null, first P oh here we missed one equal sign there. Let's refresh. Click this and we can see please fill in all the fields. So the user has not yet entered anything in these fields. Please fill in all the fields. So basically now we have checked for the first condition when the user has not entered anything in these fields so this is the closing we are going to put an else statement and what we want to check to for is if the passwords do not match so we are going to say if first pwd pwd is not equal so explanation mark not equal to second pwd so when these two do not match we want to create another toast we say m dot toast and this is the function as i said that takes in an object full of options so here we are just going to say html passwords do not match so that's what i want to display to the user refresh put some fake passwords in these two fields and click here see passwords do not match so that's a toast we have created there again then we go right after that statement we create another if else condition sorry when passwords match so if they match then we need to display something to the user so this is what we are going to display to the user when they match they are going to say passwords passwords matched please wait refresh the page and put in passwords that match you see passwords matched please wait so that's how we can validate this simple form that you saw and this is the simple code that you have to write to validate we first check if fields are empty or well, right now here when they don't match we also have to return false but it still works but we have to follow the rules so when the user has not put in anything we shall display this please fill in all the fields if passwords do not match we say passwords do not match we return false else if they match we display this password matched please wait 
So in the last tutorial, you saw that I was redirecting users to somewhere on the page in case they are too. It's the way you will have to do it when somebody enters in a password that matches, then they have to continue to the next page. So what I did, I just put some window object here and I created the set timeout function, set timeout. We pass in the callback function. Put the semicolon there. And what we want to do inside here, we call again the window object and say location. So it's where you want the, to redirect the user. Then specify the hyper reference, href. Put double quotes and put in the link where you want to redirect your users to. So right now, maybe I want you to go to YouTube. dot com forward slash Austin code cipher. So let's say that's where I want the users to go to when they pass or put in. Let's say I want it to take effect after five seconds. So I refresh this and I put in passwords that much. Click this. So it will be there for some data length of four seconds. Then after they redirect the user to that page that I want them to go to. So let me first turn on my internet here. Faster, faster. So basically, that's how we can validate. And if you're new to this channel and it's the, it's the first video that you watched with me, then we can pass in different options to these tools we created. So let's say we want them to be circular. We can say classes and it's a string we say rounded. So I'm going to go on putting this class on every toast. Don't forget to put a comma there. Refresh the page. Check this, they will be rounded. Even for passwords that do not match, it will be rounded. Even passwords that match, It will also be rounded. So I'm not going to put every attribute or option that we have to pass into these tool tips. It's now your option and ways on how you want to validate this form. So as you can see, the set timeout function has worked after some five seconds. So the default display length or the time it takes to show these toasts, it's four seconds. Then that's why I put here five seconds. So after these four seconds, when the toast has disappeared, then they'll redirect the users to my channel. So guys, feel free to subscribe to my channel, like the video, share it on different social medias, and I'll be seeing you in the next tutorials. Peace.